Hi, I'm Sridhar and I'm doing this video on elastic collision in uh, two dimensions. Uh, let us uh, recap collision in one dimension before we get into collision in two dimensions. Right? Uh, we have this uh, very common example. Let us say this is a, a table top and we have, uh, let us say, a spherical object. Let us say a marble placed over here of mass uh, M2 and we have uh, another marble of mass M1 placed on the table. Let us say this is stationary, right? And we apply some force onto this and it starts moving in this direction. Let us say with the velocity u1. When it hits it in the center, both the marbles start moving in this direction. So we have this as mass m1, the marble 1, and the marble m2 over here, right? And with velocities v1 and v2, their final velocities. So we call this elastic uh, collision in one dimension, right? Because uh, after the collision, the marbles continue to move in the same direction. So the motion is in the in one dimension. So collision in one dimension. Elastic, the word elastic, once again, we'll just quickly recap this. Elastic collision means momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is also conserved. Meaning that the total momentum of the system before the collision and after collision is equal. Similarly, the total kinetic energy of the system before collision, this part is before collision, this part is after collision, the total kinetic energy remains conserved. Right? So that is what we mean by an elastic collision. Uh, let's move into elastic collision in two dimensions. Right? Uh, all of you uh, have, if not played, uh, seen billiards or snooker being played. Let us say this is a tabletop on which uh, snooker is being played and let us say this is mass M2, one of the spherical balls and let us say M1. Right? Both of them are stationary. Right? This, the player hits this ball, right? maybe let us say in this direction. Right? This starts moving with velocity u1, hits it over here. And after collision, they start moving in different directions. Let us say uh, this is the direction in which M1 starts moving and this is, let us say, this is the direction in which M2 starts moving. And let us say these are the angles theta1 and theta2 with the original direction. Right? This is what we call as collision in two dimensions because after the collision, the balls have started moving in two different directions. They are not moving in the same directions, two different directions, hence collision in two dimensions. Of course, elastic collision would mean momentum and kinetic energy has been conserved over here. Right? Okay. Let us look at uh, <coughs> the mathematics of this. Uh, let us say, let us first begin by conservation of uh, momentum, right? by conservation of momentum momentum before collision right momentum uh, p, uh, p represents momentum p before collision right is equal to p after collision right in fact i should say if the sigma p right if sigma p the summation of all the momentums of all the objects before collision and summation of momentum of all the objects after collision so sigma p this would give me m1 u1 right this is the momentum of mass m1 plus momentum of mass second mass m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 v1 stands for final velocity so m1 v1 plus m2 v2 so this is what i get on the basis of conservation of momentum now if i look at it uh, the scalar quantities of this and if i take a direction into consideration for that i'll need to look at the various components of velocity right mass is a scalar quantity velocity is a vector quantity so let me find out the various components of velocity let us begin with u1 right u1 is in the horizon is moving in the horizontal direction so it has only a horizontal component it does not have a vertical component as far as u2 is concerned u2 is equal to 0 because the mass m2 was initially at rest right so u2 will become 0 right let us look at v1 right this is v1 of mass final velocity of mass m1 and this is v2 of mass m2 now v1 is in this direction so it will have a horizontal component and it will have a vertical component right so for v1 the horizontal component component this one will be the horizontal component this theta1 horizontal component will be v1 cos theta1 and the vertical component will be vertical component is this right this is the vertical component of v1 and that will be equal to v1 sin theta 1, right v1 sin theta 1 so these are the two components of v1 similarly for v2 the horizontal component will be horizontal component will be this is v2 so horizontal component will be this along this direction and that will be equal to v2 cos theta 2 and the vertical component will be v2 sin theta 2 
this is the horizontal component and this is the vertical component this is the vertical component of uh, <coughs> velocity right and so we got we, the components of uh, uh, okay i think i made a mistake over here right the direction of v2 cos v2 sin theta will be this right okay let me show this diagram here again right so that we are clear this is v1 right this is theta1 so this will be v1 sin theta1 and this will be v2 v1 cos theta1 right and uh, this is v2 and this angle is theta2 so this will be v2 cos theta2 and this will be v theta2 okay right so now if we take uh, directions into account and look at uh, law conservation of momentum right along x axis what will i have along x axis okay, okay. u1 is along the x axis so i will have m1 u1 as the initial momentum of mass m1 plus initially mass m2 is at rest because it, u2 is zero and therefore you will get zero over here okay after collision what happens m1 and what is the velocity of m1 in the x direction m1 a velocity m1 this is m1 v1 is v1 cos theta1 v1 cos theta1 right and what is the velocity of m2 in the x direction it is v2 cos theta2 so i'll get m2 v2 cos theta2 Right. So this is one equation I get which I'll rewrite as m1 u1 is equal to m1 v1 cos theta1 plus m2 v2 cos theta2. Right. Equation one. Okay. What happens along y-axis? Okay. Along y-axis. Let us begin with u1. Right for the mass m1. U1 has a horizontal. There's no there's no component along the x-axis. So I'll get m1 into zero plus m2 is at rest. So m2 into zero is equal to after collision what is the component of v1 in the y, y direction v1 sin theta 1 right so i'll get m1 v1 sin theta 1 and what is the component of v2 is v2 sin theta 2 but you can see v1 sin theta 1 and v2 sin theta 2 are in opposite direction so i will take minus m2 v2 sin theta 2 in the previous case over here we did not take the minus n because v1 cos theta 1 and v2 cos theta 2 are in the same direction whereas v1 sin theta 1 is in this direction v2 sin theta 2 is in the downward direction therefore we take a minus n so in other words what we are saying is this is minus v2 sin theta 2 right? so 0 is equal to m1 v1 sin theta 1 minus m2 v2 sin theta 2 so this is equation 2 okay Okay, we're coming to the end of this video, just one final step and then we'll be done with this. So, we got, I have got two equations, right? Uh, the final equation is uh, uh, by conservation of kinetic energy. Because we are saying that it's an elastic collision, momentum and kinetic energy is conserved. We have looked at momentum, what about kinetic energy? By conservation of kinetic energy, half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square is equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m v2 square kinetic energy is a scalar quantity energy is a scalar quantity so we don't have to worry about directions in this case we have to simply look at their magnitude quantities so this is the equation i get i know u2 is zero so this term will vanish from the equation u2 is zero so this will go away and i can take half from this out of this equation so u1 square is equal to m1 v1 square plus m2 v2 square this is equation number three right so we got three equations eh? 1, 2, and 3 with uh, and the, the, un the number of unknowns in this equation is uh, v1, v2, theta1, and theta2. Right? These are four unknowns and we have got only three equations. So, maybe we'll have to know one of these to use these equations to find out various values. Of course, uh, we are saying that we would be aware of uh, m1, m2, and u1, u2. Right? This we would be knowing. Right? The unknowns are v1, v2, theta1, and theta2. To find out four unknowns, we need four equations, but here we have only three equations. So what will happen is we will not be able to find out all four. If we want to find out, we should be aware or we should know one of these. If you know one of these, then there are three unknowns and we got three equations and we can find out all the others. Okay, with this I have uh, completed elastic collision in two dimensions, right? 
And the practical examples of this, as I told you earlier, was the, when we play billiards or when we play marbles, right? Elastic collision comes into play. Uh, collision in two dimensions rather comes into play. I will, I can't say elastic collision because elastic in ideal situation, right? And uh, it will n no collision is perfect stick, right? So, but there are examples in two dimensions. Okay, thank you.